Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. We're looking at Jesus and the Eyewitnesses, the Gospel as Eyewitness Testimony, Richard Ball from 2006, Erdman. He writes on page 10, The Gospel narratives are the synthesis of history and story of oral history and eyewitness and the interpretation and narrating process of an author by a uh, Byer Scoggs, page 10. That's who he's quoting. So basically, um, what that means is that completely smashes the idea that the Gospels are material, historical material that were done by um, anonymous communities that were just mythological that over a long period of time developed by a community of writers. What uh, Borkham is proposing is no early on there were authoritative people who had an understanding of the life and death of Jesus. They passed this information on. It was their interpretation but it was written up by one author that gave the perspective of that material and so we see that in Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John each had, was an author had and wrote as an author and we can see that as we read the, the Gospels uh, Borkham writes the ancient historians know that first hand insider testimony gave access to truth that could not have been otherwise Though not uncritical, they were willing to trust this eyewitness information for the sake of the unique access they gave to the truth of the events. A remarkable thing about ancient historiography of the time that we just looked at of the Greek historian is they, if you read... Um, Uh, Polybius. This is in his history. Um, he goes, My history begins in the 140th Olympiad. The events from which it starts are these in Greece, what is called the Social War. Um, There is an analogy between the plan of my history and the marvellous spirit of the age which I have to deal, just as fortune made almost all the affairs of the world incline in one direction and force them to converge upon one and the same point. So it is my task as a historian to put before my readers a compendious view of the part played by fortune in bringing about the general catastrophe. It was this peculiarity which originally challenged my attention. Um, Just get About this, we'll get this. What I'm doing is just getting some quotes of Plebius on history. Calabius, if history is deprived of the truth, we are left with nothing but an idle and profitable tale. That's Calabius.
Well, can't get. The point. Um, this is really significant. Uh, and Palabius, you if you read Palabius histories, uh, can't, it's right about the middle of the book. But it's described exactly as Borkum uh, states it. Borkum says the ancient his historians know that first hand insider testimony gave access to the truth that could not have been otherwise. And when you read Palabius, um, you get this feeling, you get this feeling that actually unless we get eyewitness material, this eyewitness material for a battle gives us a unique access to that battle, a unique truth that we would not have otherwise. And the thought that comes to my mind is when we're looking at the life of Jesus, why as modern historians don't we have that view of eyewitness material? eyewitness material and history the eyewitness material gives you a unique access to the understanding of the event I think that what's happened is over because we had rank and we had historians from that time trying to give us objective history and it's more trying to be scientific and so that often would negate the individual accounts of historical event. Maybe this modernistic perspective of history uh, has been influ too influential. And I know there are trends in history where that modernistic understanding of this we we're going to get objective history and the denigrating of eyewitness material um, that the trends have changed that there is a movement away from that to more seeing that individuals and communities and their eyewitness testimony is, 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 is now being seen as important and has been for some time um, but I do think there is a truth that as historians we have missed and that is to say that eyewitness material does give you a unique access into history and I think the ancient historians had something there that we have lost as modern people and so um, if there was this wide held belief by ancient historians that eyewitness material gives you, gives you a unique truth into history then when the gospel writers are writing Matthew, Mark, Luke and John they would have that in their mind and that's what the perspective that they were writing from um, Plabius uses the word inquire it's a Greek it's a judicial term these kind of Greek words like I inquired this was a technical term used for by historians that they used in their language in the ancient times in how they expounded history they inquired that Greek word had a judicial understanding of investigation and looking at eyewitness material Th that word inquired was a technical Greek historian's word and people like Papias um, right about one 111 AD maybe a little bit later they were using the same kind of technical Greek words that the Greek historians were using and so in other words what we're seeing is 
right across the board not only in the gospel of Luke not only before the life of Jesus with Greek historians you got before the life of Jesus Greek historians you got the gospel of Luke and after after the gospel writers uh, in the early late first century and early second century when Christian thinkers and writers are writing they have this mindset that Polybius has about the importance of eyewitness material that it gives you a unique access to historical inquiry what this tells you is I suppose what it tells you is they took it very seriously they took eyewitness testimony very seriously and so when we're reading the Gospels we should take them more seriously it doesn't mean say as a skeptic you'll accept it all but if people have invested their lives in writing these works because they believe it's based on eyewitness material then we have to take that seriously and which doesn't say we have to take it on board uncritically but the days of saying oh it's all myth Jesus is a myth and Jesus didn't rise from the dead and it's all myth you can't just dismiss it like that you've got to engage with the material and I'll ask any skeptic today or even any Christian have you engaged with the Gospels and have you taken them seriously as eyewitness material and what will that teach you about either if you're a Christian your faith or you as a skeptic